If you weren't already aware, Gemini Pro is now available in Google Bard. It's available for basic text responses and was recently released in the UK on the 19th of December. What we'll do in this video is we'll put Google Bard using Gemini Pro side by side against ChatGPT 3.5. Now I've been a big fan of ChatGPT. I've used it for my work and other purposes for a number of months now. I haven't used Google Bard for as long, so what I want to do is I want to put the two side by side and look at some basics. Let's compare the interface, let's try some basic text responses and see what the differences are between the two products. Will ChatGPT continue to prevail for me or are there going to be advantages to using Google Bard with the new inbuilt Gemini Pro AI model instead? Let's jump into the video and take a look. So we have Bard and ChatGPT loaded up side by side in separate web browsers. We have Bard here on the left and ChatGPT on the right. Some disclosure first of all, I am using ChatGPT 3.5 rather than the 4 model because I want to compare the free versions of both products against each other. Now, straight off the bat, we can see that the Bard interface, certainly to me, looks a lot clearer and easier to understand. We've got the three main categories of prompt at the top, understand, create, and explore, with some examples of the prompts I can use against each. If we take a look at ChatGPT, that does contain some examples, but it's not giving me an idea of the kind of categories and options I have available against each. Other observations, we have on the Bard side the option to use a microphone for voice input. That's not something I have available on the ChatGPT side. And again, I have an option here to upload an image to Bard, which isn't something that is available by standard in 3.5, although, full disclosure, that is available in ChatGPT4. So let's go ahead and ask our first question. So let's say, do you have access to real-time data? And let's ask that question of both. So we can see ChatGPT has come back, first of all, a little bit quicker than Bard. And the 3.5 model is confirming it only has information available up to January 2022. Bard, on the other hand, as standard, has access to real-time data across a number of categories, such as news, financial data, weather, and even flight information. Now, one of the things that I like here with Bard is I have the option here to view of a draft. So it's given me different draft options, which I can flick through or even refresh for a completely different response altogether. When the response does come back, you can see I have the option to skip the response, which stops it dead in its tracks. Let me just regenerate that so we can take it to the end and then the final option I have available in Bard that isn't available in ChatGPT is also to play the response back audibly. So I can hear the response as well as see it, which is a nice feature. One of the things I want to point out at this stage as well is what I can do once the response has been provided. So we can see that on both models, I have the thumbs up or thumbs down to indicate whether I thought that was a good or bad response. I've got the option to here modify the response in Bard. This is a really useful feature. So one of the common things I used to find when using ChatGPT is I would need to tell ChatGPT through the chat whether I wanted the response uh, to be more detailed, whether I wanted a more succinct response, or whether I needed to change the tone of the response. What Bard does by buttons is allow me to select one of those modifications in a single click where that isn't something that I can do in chat GPT. Moving on, we also have the option in Bard to Let's say share I'm on a keto and diet. export the response. Now the options I get here is to and click on share, which will I would like a, a link breakfast recommendation. Publicly. So I'm on a keto diet. Can you provide a breakfast we also recommendation have to export the response to Google Docs or create a draft email in Gmail? And let's see. Now, there is says. an export option that allows me to create a link in chat GPT, but I'm not getting the easy export options that I'm getting in Bard, so I can put that into a document or an email. 
However, what I can do is I can select to copy the response by clicking on the copy button there, and then I can paste that into whichever medium I choose. Okay, so let's add something a little bit more detailed now. And I'm on a keto diet, so I want both of these chat models to make a recommendation to me. Okay, so let's see what both models do in this situation. Okay, so let's take a look at Bard first of all. Now, if I scroll down, I can see that Bard is basing its recommendations on three separate categories. So I have, first of all, my savory recommendations, and then it goes on to some sweet recommendations as well. What I really like about Bard's response is it's providing me with visuals. So I get an idea about some of the recommendations, how they look, and how I might go about making them as well. If we look at some of the detail provided, so let's take a look at the savory recommendations. Now, I can see in some situations, it is giving me details on the ingredients and how to make these items. So it's giving me things like oven temperatures and how long to bake the items for. That seems to be in the situations where the ingredients require a little bit more care to prepare. It's not doing that for everything. In the other recommendations, it's just given me a high level overview of what each recommendation contains and in general terms, how to go about cooking that without the detail. So this seems to be what I would say a fairly comprehensive response. It's given me plenty of options, plenty of ideas and allow me to visualize those at the same time and even get a bonus tip from Bard as well. So if I'm on the move, it's giving me some ideas about the kind of foods I can take with me. 3.5, so ChatGPT is going straight into the detail. It makes a single recommendation. It's providing me details of the ingredients and instructions, but that's pretty much it. It's not giving me various options to play with. So GPT is making an assumption that I just want one recommendation. I want to get straight on with that, um, and I want less choice whether, where Bard is giving me all those various options to play with. Okay, so for the last question, I'm going to ask something a little bit more detailed requiring a very specific type of response. And let's consider a business situation where I need to write to one of my superiors asking for a response to an email I sent them last week. So let's paste the full question in here to Bard and to ChatGPT. And essentially the prompt is, I am a senior manager in a law firm. Please write an email to one of the directors asking them to respond to the email about a meeting I sent them last week. The tone must be polite and professional, but firm. So let's go ahead and see what both Bard and GPT come back with. And again, straight off the bat, I do find that GPT is a little bit quicker at coming back with a response and then followed closely by Bard. So what I've noticed with the Bard response is it's leaving placeholders to add additional detail to the email, where ChatGPT is excluding any detail from the email because I've simply not provided that level of detail. Now, if I'm busy and need a really quick response I can use, I guess the chat GPT one requires less thought where the Bard response will be much more specific to the situation at hand and it's probably going to have more impact because of that. So I guess this is a balance of time versus the impact I want the email to have on the recipient. Um, but I think in terms of the actual content, both emails seem to be fairly well worded. And they also sign off in similar ways. I do get a slightly warmer, more casual sign off with ChatGPT ending that warm regards where the bad response ending something sincerely sounds very, very abrupt. And I, I have never and would never finish an email just by saying 
sincerely. So I think both have their pros and cons. And I do get some additional tips from Bard as well about the way I may want to structure and word my email. So this is really how did the two compare? Well, what I really like about Bard is I like the interface. It just feels slicker, easier to navigate. There's additional options. I really like the draft options, being able to see at the touch of button what the different responses might be, and then to easily regenerate responses if I'm not happy with the options given. Whilst I can do that to some extent in ChatGPT, it's not as easy. I have to go back to the original query, I have to edit that and resubmit it. So it just seems a little bit more clunky to use. What I also like about Google Bard, again using the Gemini Pro model, is the fact that it gives me images where it feels appropriate. So when I was looking at the breakfast options, I could see at a glance some of the suggestions it was making without having to read the text, which was a really nice feature. I'm going to try out Google Bard more. I'm going to try more complex scenarios. I'm going to really put it to the test now against ChatGPT. I think there's a number of different options I would like to try. I would like to try it for data analysis. I would like to integrate it with my Google Drive and really see how it performs against not just ChatGPT 3.5, but also the ChatGPT 4 model as well. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, give us a subscribe and watch more videos where we'll be putting Bard against ChatGPT.